Hi yogis! Today we'll be doing a back bends and heart opening focused class. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. We'll start in a meditation. So just take any seat that's comfortable for you. I'm taking this easy pose here. And you can take a seat on a bolster or a pillow if that's more comfortable. Something I really want you to focus on in this meditation is to make sure your heart is open. Usually a lot of the times in classes I'll see people sitting and their shoulders start to close in, their chest starts to close in, which is just natural for us nowadays that we're always on the computer and always driving and on our phone so our bodies are already closed most of the time so it's harder for us and more active for us to stay open. And I don't want it to be like really open, like, okay, I'm open in this meditation, which is beautiful. You can do that <laughs> as well if you want. But try to find this place where you're still comfortable in your seat, but that your heart is, and your chest is still open. Your shoulders are in line with your chest. They're not too far back and they're not too close forward. So we're right in the center. And then once you find that seat, once you feel comfortable there, you can close your eyes and go inwards. What does that mean to go inwards? We're just gonna start focusing on our breath. After we thought about our posture, now we focus on breath. You think about the movement of your breath, going in through your nose and down to your hips, and from your hips all the way up and out through your nose. The whole journey of your breath, really visualizing this beautiful journey of air flowing into you and out of you. <sighs> we'll be here for a couple deep breaths, just visualizing the movement of your breath. Make sure to maintain that open heart. Also feeling and being mindful towards what's going on in that area around your heart while you're breathing. Does it feel constricted and tight or does it feel free and open? Without any judgment, just being mindful of how you feel. If anything needs to be released, release it. If anything just feels right, just be with it. From here, I'd like you to invite you to visualize a big green light at the center of your chest. And the heart chakra color is green, so we're gonna focus on that color. It's just gonna be any shade of green that you want that resonates with you, a light that's just shining from your chest. And every breath you take, you feel it getting a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter. A little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Visualizing that green light slowly taking over your whole body. From the source at your heart center and rooting outwards towards your legs and your arms and your head. And then from there, the light gets even bigger, starts to travel into the ground beneath you into the walls around you. Maybe if there's any people around you, it's starting to hit them as well, to reach them. And slowly and slowly, you just feel this light spreading and spreading to whatever you want to visualize, to any place in the world, any person in the world. If you can reach it with your light, then it's it's, it's manageable and it's possible. Slowly but surely you feel this green light reaching towards every being that you love. Human, animal, plant. The green light grows and it gets stronger and stronger and brighter and brighter. To the point that eventually it's covering the whole planet. And the 
whole planet is just radiating in this beautiful green aura filled with so much love, so much light. And it's all starting here within you at your heart center. you take in all this beautiful energy, I want you to slowly now start to bring the light back to your core. Almost like you're slurping it back up from everything that you shared it with, now it's coming back to you. That green light is slowly, slowly coming back to your core, coming back to your heart until you feel it radiating at your heart center again. And then I want you to really preserve this light here in your chest, at your heart. As much as you can, thinking about it, remembering this feeling throughout every posture we do today, every movement, even after this practice, if you choose to, or into your day later on or tomorrow. Whenever you feel you need this extra green light of love, it's there for you always. Take one last deep breath together here. And then you'll place your hands onto your knees. And we'll start to enter our physical practice, starting with the seated cat-cow to gently enter our movement. As you inhale, you reach your heart through your arms, opening as well the whole throat region, activating all of those hormonal glands. And then pushing against your knees, rounding your spine, maybe connecting chin to chest on that exhale. Keep going at your own pace. You can do this with closed eyes or open eyes, whatever feels right to you. Really thinking about what's going on in my spine here? What's going on in my chest? Does my heart feel open? Does my spine feel flexible? Asking yourself these simple questions about your movement without any judgment, of course, just being aware of your body, being aware of your movements and your breath. Notice how it's all connected as well. Every time you inhale deeply, your body wants to open, your heart wants to reach more forward. And every time you exhale even more deeply, you want to hug yourself more inward it helps, they help one another. The same way goes in the other direction. If you focus on opening that heart even more, chances are your inhale will be longer. Or if you push a little bit further back, your exhale might be a little bit deeper as well. Just take note of these little connections. Now well, let's add some circular movements here. Bringing that chest all the way to the right side and then forward, inhale, all the way to the left and backwards, exhale. Keep going at your own pace. Just getting a little bit deeper here into the flexibility of our spine. And then change direction. Inhale back to center. 
Exhale, other side. Feeling this nice deep stretch here between all of the ribs in our rib cage. Lots of space in our upper body. This is what we want to create when we're working on back bends and hard opening postures, making sure that we're never collapsing into the pose. There's always space. Inhale back to center. Exhale, right hand to left knee. Left hand comes behind the back, maybe grabbing the inner thigh for a seated twist. Again here, you'll notice that if, my, if you open your heart more deeply, it might be easier to go into that twist or to grab that inner thigh. Whereas if your shoulders are a little bit closed off, all of a sudden you can see that my hand can't reach my thigh. So know that when you open your heart, you roll those shoulders back into a twist, it can usually help you get a little bit deeper. Inhale, hands back to center, tall spine. Exhale, other side. Deep breaths, always using your breath as a tool. Every inhale, you find more length. Every exhale, try to go deeper into the posture, only if it feels comfortable. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, let's lower the hands and come to a seat on our toes for our handy dandy toe stretch. Always got to make sure our feet are nice and stretched out before we do any poses on them. So we're sitting on our heels. Make sure all your toes are tucked under, even your little pinky toe. And then today we'll add a little neck stretch and wrist stretch. So we'll bring the back of our hands onto the top of our thighs, like right at the crease of our hips. Pressing down onto the back of your hand. And then you're going to let your chin come to your chest, making sure you still have a nice tall spine. And you're just going to rock your chin from shoulder to shoulder. A little bit more. And then we'll inhale, the hands will come up. Exhale, bend the right elbow, grab that elbow with the left hand, coming to a little shoulder stretch in our toe stretch. Yes, if the toes are on fire, you can play with any variation that feels comfortable to you, but try to hold it a little bit longer. Inhale, hands come all the way back up. Exhale, change sides with this sh shoulder stretch. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, let's slowly come out of our toe stretch. Flip the toes for ankle stretch and sit on your heels. We'll stay here today and add cow face arms just to warm up our shoulders a little bit more. Gonna inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, bend the right elbow. And this time we're gonna let the left hand all the way come round the back and grab hands in the back. If you can't grab hands, which is totally normal and okay, you can grab a strap or a scarf or any long fabric, or you can even grab the back of your shirt and then slowly and slowly inch the fingers together. If you're grabbing fingers and you're grabbing fingers. Let's take a couple deep breaths here and I want you to see what's going on in your spine. Now, these cow face arms are a beautiful way to open up that chest and get a deep shoulder stretch in both directions. But a lot of the time, people will kind of reach the belly forward and kind of hinge at the lower back. I want you to make sure that your ribs are tucked in your belly is active and you're kind of neutralizing that lower back, making sure that it's not too pushed forward. You don't want to find a back bend here in the cow face arms. Still have a nice neutral spine with a gentle heart opening, focusing more on that thoracic opening, the upper back, which is much harder to work on the flexibility. Normally we just go straight into that lower back. So try to focus on the upper back. Take one more deep breath. And 
And then we'll inhale the hands, come all the way up. If you need to help that bottom hand, you can. Exhale, other side, bending the left elbow, and then rounding that right arm to grab the left hand. Again, if you're not reaching, you can feel free to use any prop or your shirt. If you are, grabbing fingers, again, making sure that you're not spilling into that lower back, that the belly and core are active, the lower back is neutral, and you're just trying to focus on opening that upper back and the mid back. Try to rest your head onto your upper arm like a pillow, making sure that you're not collapsing in the head and shoulders forward. One more deep breath. And then slowly release. And then we'll come forward to a tabletop. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Also as wide as your shoulders and as wide as your hips. Spread those fingertips to get a nice grip on your mat. Pressing into the finger edges, into the whole palm of your hand, feeling really stable and grounded here. And we'll start doing some wrist circles just to gently warm up our joints. At your own pace, connecting your movement to your breath. Just starting gently, making sure that our body is really warmed up before we go into our more challenging backbend postures. Change direction. And then we'll come back to center and go to some cat cows. Inhale, look up towards the sky. Again, opening the throat region, just like we did in the seated cat cow. Except now I really want you to make sure that you're reaching your heart towards between your arms here so that it's not just you're not just looking up. I want you to really actively press against the ground and reach your heart through your arms. At the same time, you're um, tilting that tailbone towards the sky. Really back bending here, but in a gentle way, really stable as well. Exhale, you're pushing your legs and your hands against the ground, rounding the spine towards the sky, maybe connecting chin to chest. Keep going at your own pace, inhaling and exhaling. Again, being mindful of what's going on in my spine, what's going on in your spine here. Every vertebra, every single movement, opening the chest, closing the chest, Knowing that every time you round a little bit more, you have more space to open. Every time you go deeper in one direction, you have more space to go deeper into the other. Moving mindfully and deeply. From here, We'll lean our weight into our left hand and our right foot, and we'll lift right hand and left foot, finding quadruplex. We'll go into some crunches here before we find tiger pose. So we inhale and we reach that left foot back and that right hand forward, and we exhale, connect the knee to elbow under the body. Almost like cat-cow, but a little bit more stable, a little bit more engaging. Keep going at your own pace. Let's do two more. One more. Inhale, let's meet up. And then we'll find tiger pose, our first back bend. Grabbing, reaching your right hand back to grab your left foot. Make sure that the foot isn't pulling you down. The foot is lifting. The foot and leg are active. Lifting up, make sure you find a point on the floor or something in front of you, a drishti. Focus, you know, when we're balancing, we need deep focus. Make sure you're still breathing, lifting, grounding, all at the same time. Reaching that heart forward, make sure you're not collapsing in the chest. One more deep breath. 
Lift a little bit higher. And then slowly release. Let's change sides. Take a moment to regroup yourself at the center. And then we'll move the weight to our right hand and our left foot. Lifting in the right foot and the left hand. <laughs> Inhale as you reach. Exhale as you lower. Four more. Keep going. Two more. Last one. Inhale, come back up. Reach that left hand back to grab that right foot. Actively lifting in that right leg to lift into your beautiful tiger pose, channeling that powerful tiger energy in your back bend. Focus. You're balancing here. Make sure you feel balanced on your hand and leg. Pushing against the ground, opening your heart forward. Keep lifting, one more breath. And then slowly come back to center and let's take a child's pose. Sitting on your heels, I'd like to invite you to go into a wide child's pose. So you're opening the knees a little bit wider, like um, almost the distance of your mat. And dropping your heart to the ground. Activating this deep heart opening here as well. <sighs> Taking a couple deep breaths just to regroup. Let the back rest a moment as you let your heart sink towards the ground. Let's take one more deep breath. And then we'll slowly come back up to our tabletop. And then we'll find puppy pose. Now in puppy pose, if your shoulders aren't flexible enough, it's gonna feel really tight. So one variation would be to stay on your elbows and just slide the elbows a little bit more and more forward and kind of rocking back between your arms. If you feel flexible and are ready for the full puppy, you can slide through bringing your chest to the ground and your chin to the ground. If it doesn't feel comfortable in your chin, you can rest the forehead as well. So this is called puppy pose or melting heart. So I really want you to channel that energy like your heart is melting to the floor beneath you and you feel that beautiful green light energy just radiating and connecting to the ground. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slide through bringing our bellies to the ground. We'll go into some cobra variations now to feel the difference between an active back bend and a passive back bend. So first we'll do some active ones. Let's bring our hands by our chest and we'll go into baby cobra. Now in baby cobra, the, be the belly stays on the floor and we're just lifting the head and the chest. The belly is entirely on the floor. So at first I want you to use your fingertips to help you kind of open that heart a little bit more forward and roll the shoulders a little bit more back. You can do this with legs together or open legs, whatever feels more comfortable. We'll take three deep breaths here in an active baby cobra. Immediately you should feel your back muscles working, your postural muscles along your spine. One more breath. And then we'll slowly lift our hands off the ground, hovering above the ground. Now actively using just our back muscles to stay lifted. Three deep breaths. Keep lifting on the inhale and grounding on the exhale. And then slowly lower down, forehead to the ground. You can shake out your hips if you want for a second. 
this little bit releasing from the back, shaking the hips side to side. And now we'll go into medium cobra. In medium cobra, the belly lifts, but the hands won't straighten. So we inhale and we come up halfway, belly off the ground. Arms are still bent and the elbows are staying tucked by the body. So here we'll be actively using those shoulder muscles. It should feel a little bit harder than that baby cobra. Again, make sure your heart is radiating forward. Those shoulders are rolled back and are far from the ears. Three deep breaths here and active medium cobra. Feel those muscles on your spine working. We want that. Those are the muscles that keep us standing tall and straight without slouching. We want these muscles to be strong. And then slowly lower down. Let's bring our hands above the ground. And this time we're going to inhale lift and try to lift as high as you can without using your hands. If it helps, you can reach the hands back to help you get a little bit higher. Three deep breaths, trying your very best to keep lifting, to keep pushing. One more breath, and slowly lower back down. Beautiful, shake out the hips again. <sighs> Going into our last variation of cobra, full cobra. Inhale as you lift up, belly off the ground, straightening the arms now. This is already a pretty intense back bend. If you can see, imagine me standing and doing this back bend. It's pretty deep. If it's too deep for you, you can bring the hands a little bit more forward so it'll be less intense. Another good tip is to tilt your pelvis towards the ground without really clenching your glutes so that you release any strain from your lower back. For more intensity, you'll bring the feet together. For less intensity, they'll be a little bit spread apart. Find your deepest cobra that feels comfortable and safe to you. Make sure you're reaching that heart forward, shoulders away from the ears. Feel free to look up and back or stay looking forward. Three deep breaths. And then slowly lower back down. From here, we'll interlace our fingers behind our back and go for an almost locust variation, but trying to think cobra. In your mind, you're imagining yourself reaching up as high as you just did in that, in that more passive cobra, but really actively finding it here without the hip. Inhale, slowly reach up, lift your chest off the ground, press against the top of your shins and your feet to help push you and lift you a little bit higher, reaching those hands all the way towards your feet, three deep breaths. And slowly come back to the ground, shake out the hips. Beautiful. Lots of heart opening. You should feel super activated in the chest and back right now. <sighs> now we'll come up onto our elbows for sphinx. A little bit gentle for a moment. The elbows should be below your shoulders, a little bit in front of them. Make sure the hands are nice and parallel and not too curled inwards, the same way that we mentioned before that the body sometimes closes without us even noticing because that's what we're used to. So make sure that the hands are in line with the elbow. And we're finding our sphinx. Again, you can choose to do this with closed legs or a little bit open legs. Pushing your forearms into the ground, lifting your heart forward, rolling the shoulders back. Again, you can choose to look up or forward. Three deep breaths. Beautiful. 
Let's move our weight onto our left hand. And then we're gonna bend the left foot as well and grab it with the right hand. So we're almost like in a crisscross bow. Roll the weight back onto your left hand, bringing your belly back down to the ground. And we'll play with this kind of crisscross bow variation. So here I want you to press into that left hand, open your heart forward, and at the same time you're gonna kick your foot into your right hand the same way we did in tiger pose. Lifting up the leg towards the sky, reaching the heart forward. Three deep breaths. Keep reaching that foot up, keep reaching that foot up. Find that deep focus on any point in front of you to help you lift a little bit higher. And then slowly release. And let's change sides. Moving the weight into your right hand. Bending in the right foot. Grab the right foot with your left hand. Roll the belly back down onto the ground. And then press into your right hand and lift that left leg, right leg towards the sky. Again, finding that focus point. Keep lifting. Feel that right thigh working really hard to keep lifting higher and higher. And that right hand to keep lifting the chest as well. Beautiful. One more deep breath, lift a little bit higher. And slowly release. Let's bring our forehead down to the ground, prepping for full bow. You can rock out the hips if you need a little second to release. And when you feel ready, you'll bring your arms back. And you'll bend both legs and flex both feet. But before you grab the feet, let's try doing this actively first. Inhale as you lift the heart, the heart forward, reaching towards your feet without grabbing them yet. Reach, reach, reach as if you were grabbing your legs and it was helping you reach a little bit higher. Keep lifting, keep lifting that heart, keep lifting the legs as well if you want. You don't have to, but you can. And then when you feel ready, grabbing your ankles, keep the feet flexed, and let's lift, finding full bow. Try to keep the thighs pressing towards each other so that your knees don't open up too wide. Beautiful, three deep breaths. And slowly release back to the ground, rocking the hips. Take a moment to rest. Beautiful bows all across the world. <laughs> Let's do one more bow before we move on. Feel free to take any variation you want if you want to do the active one or the passive one. And they're both pretty active, but more active or less. When you feel ready, bending both legs, grabbing the ankles. Inhale, lift up. Three deep breaths in whatever variation you choose, pushing the knees towards each other, squeezing and lifting. And slowly lower down. You can bend the legs and rock them side to side for some extra release. <sighs> Couple deep breaths before we move on to some standing postures. <sighs> Bring the legs back down to the ground. Let's lift up onto our hands, almost like we're going to a child's pose. Tuck the toes and find downward facing dog. Take a moment in your down dog just to release, shake it out, move the weight side to side. And then rest in a static downward facing dog. Let's take three deep breaths here. Feel free to release from the mouth for some extra release. Hands as wide as your shoulders. 
legs as wide as your legs, moving the weight back towards your heels, tilting the tailbone towards the sky, finding lots of length in your spine here. Feel free to bend the knees if you need. Let's inhale and lift the left leg up towards the sky. One-legged dog. Exhale, bend the leg and look towards the left for a little deep stretch here. If it feels called to you, you can drop that left leg behind your body for wild thing pose. Almost like wheel pose. If it doesn't, you can stay in that one-legged dog. That's okay too. Slowly come back to center. One-legged dog, inhale. Exhale, bring the leg all the way through your hands. Ground in the back foot, turning the toes outwards. And inhale straight up to warrior two. Beautiful. In our warrior two, our left knee is above our left ankle in line with our toes. Our upper body and spine are centered. Now you may be asking, Sivan, this isn't a back bend or a heart opener, but your heart is getting a really nice stretch here through the extension of the arms outward, getting a really nice chest stretch and shoulder stretch. So we really like this pose to work and help strengthen our heart opening postures. Active core, one more deep breath here. Let's move the weight into our left foot and bring that right foot halfway. Start to lean forward and bend that right foot, grabbing the foot with your right hand to find dancer pose. Beautiful standing back bend. Just like we did on the belly postures, round your heart forward and your hips forward. Keep lifting that leg, one more deep breath. And then inhale, lift the left hand back up. Exhale, bring the right leg back for warrior two. Inhale, weight comes back towards your right leg for reverse warrior. Let's take a deep breath here. Reaching that heart towards the sky in this nice side bend warrior. Make sure the front knee is still above that ankle and not collapsing inward. Inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, let's bring that left elbow to that left knee. Inhale, side angle posture. You can bring that right hand above your head or overhead. Again, making sure that your heart is looking towards the sky, that you're not collapsing into that standing arm and you're finding more space in your heart opening. One more deep breath. Let's bring our hands to the ground on both sides of the left foot and then ground in the right knee, finding low lunge. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna bring our hands to our knee, interlace the fingers, press against the knee so that you can find nice length here in the low lunge back bend. Remember what I said in the beginning about collapsing into that lower back. Make sure that it's coming from the upper back more than the lower back. You can do whatever you want with the back leg if you want to be on the upper foot or on the toes. I like to be on the toes for a little bit more stability. Beautiful. Make sure you have a deep focus. Make sure that your hips are aligned and that your knee is above your left ankle and not reaching too much in front of it. If you feel called to it, you can inhale the hands come up for a little bit more challenge, interlace the fingers and release the index, shooting up towards the sky. Finding lots of length here in the spine, use your breath, start entering a deeper back bend if you choose to. Start looking up, slowly moving your focus, your balance point towards your fingers. Maintain your balance, move slowly. <laughs> 
One more deep breath. And then hands back down to the ground. Slowly, slowly back to plank. Let's take one chaturanga here, belly to the ground. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Beautiful. Take a second to walk it out. Shake your butt, let it, let it loose for a moment before we go to the other side. Hmm. I'll change directions. Let's inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, bend the leg and look towards the right side. If you feel called to it, Dropping that right leg all the way to the ground behind you. Finding wild thing. If not, you can stay in that one-legged down dog stretch. Slowly come back to center. Inhale, right leg towards the sky. Exhale, bring the leg all the way through your hands. Grounding that back foot, dropping the heel, turning the toes outwards. Already here, make sure that the knee is above your ankle and in line with your toes. Inhale, straight into warrior two. Beautiful. Knee above the ankle, spine in line with the hips, make sure you're not leaning forward. Hands shooting out from your body, nice extension here, reaching the heart forward, active core. Look beyond your middle finger on your right hand. From here, moving the weight into your right foot, bringing that left foot halfway, bending it, grabbing it with the left hand, and finding dancer. Again, find your drishti, that point focus. Make sure you're turning the heart forward, radiating that green light in front of you. Don't collapse in the chest, don't collapse in the heart region. Kick that foot into that hand, just like we did in tiger, and in that half bow variation. One more breath, lift a little bit higher. Inhale, right hand back up to right ear. Exhale, bring that left foot back to warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Right hand towards the sky, left hand to your back leg. Reaching that heart forward, keeping the right knee above your right ankle. Don't straighten that front leg. Inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, right elbow to right knee. Left hand up towards the sky for extended side angle posture. Active body here, lifting up towards the sky, rotating that heart and that upper shoulder upwards. Make sure they're not collapsing and closing. Yes. Active hands, active chest, active core. Tuck that belly in. One more deep breath. And then we'll bring the, leg, the hands to the ground on both sides of the right leg. Drop the left knee for low lunge. From here, we're walking our hands to our knee. Interlace the fingers. Press against that knee already here. Working on that thoracic back bend, on that upper back opening. Heart radiating forward. Feeling balanced in your low lunge. One more deep breath here before we go into our advanced back bend. Only if you feel called to it. If you do, inhale, hands come up. Interlace the fingers, release the index and point up towards the sky. Focus on one point. If you feel called to it, starting to move your gaze up towards your fingertips. Breathing deeply, staying focused and balanced. Start to let the hips drop. If you feel called to it, maybe walking the fingers a little bit 
across the ceiling to the back of the room. One more breath. And hands come back to the ground. Yes, back to plank. Chaturanga, exhale. Belly all the way down to the ground. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Beautiful, you should feel real warm and bendy right now. Let's take one more deep breath in our down dog. And then we'll walk, step, or hop to a seat. We made it back down to the ground. Let's bring the feet together for bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana. Now a lot of people in this posture will tend to round the spine and close forward. So if you feel that happening to you, which is totally okay, you can sit on a block or a couple of books and it'll help you find that hard opening that we're looking for. If you're okay, find that length. Inhale, the hands will come all the way up. Exhale, lower the hands down behind you. Stay high on your fingertips, tented fingertips. And reach the heart forward. The head can fall back or stay looking forward. Reach, reach, reach that heart forward. Shoulders rolling back. One more deep breath. Inhale, the hands will come back up. Exhale, fold forward. Even here, even when we're in forward fold, still try to radiate that heart forward. Just like I said, a lot of the time, our instincts will just be to round the spine and get that head to the floor, get our head to our legs, which isn't the goal of a forward fold. You want to hinge from the hips, open the heart forward, still have lots of length in your spine while you're folding. It's okay if you don't get the lowest, you want to work correctly. Especially for this class, you want to feel your heart is still open, even when we're folding. Slowly start to come back up. Let's take a couple of rolls. We'll close the legs. Grabbing onto our shins. Taking a couple rolls, giving ourselves a little back massage. A little bit of core work as well. And then we'll meet with our backs on the ground. Preparing for a low bridge, keep the legs bent, hips distance, hands by your hips. And then we'll slowly start to lift the hips up. Make sure you're pressing into your feet so that your legs are really active and that your knees aren't opening up outwards or your toes. Keep them hips distance, keep them facing forward. The goal here is to lift so high that your chin touches your chest, radiating that heart forward, finding this nice, gentle back bend. Deep breaths. Three more breaths, pressing into your feet, lifting the hips high. Feel free to interlace fingers underneath your body or keeping the hands on the ground. And then slowly lower down, vertebra by vertebra. Beautiful. We'll go into full wheel now. Hands will come by the ears. If you don't want to go into full wheel, you can do bridge again, the same move we just did. If you're in wheel with me, our hands are by our ears, close to our bodies, elbows are facing up, not outwards. Pressing deep into your feet, legs are active. Again, making sure that your knees are facing forward and your toes, hips distance. When you feel ready, 
Press into your hands and your feet and lift your hips up towards the sky. Deep breaths here. Try to focus on finding length on the front of your body and the back of your body. You shouldn't feel any collapsing anywhere. If it feels comfortable, start rocking the weight forward and back between your shoulders, radiating that heart even more forward. Feeling that green light radiating between your arms and your chest. And then we'll slowly come back down with control and ease. Take a moment with your one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. You can drop the knees inwards on each other to make a little bit more space on the lower back. Three deep breaths here, just to feel whatever you need to feel. If that felt hard, if that felt easy, if it felt fun and exciting, whatever you feel, just being with that feeling. Feeling your heartbeat and the power of your heart. Let's go into one more wheel. If you don't feel called to it, you can do bridge again or just stay here resting. If you're with me, hands are by the ears. Pressing into the feet and into the hands. And we lift. Pressing into your fingertips, feeling super grounded and balanced here. The weight should be perfectly distributed between your hands and your feet. If you feel called to take any fun variation, you can. Maybe coming up onto your tippy toes. Maybe lifting one leg up towards the sky. Whatever you feel called to do. Maybe it's just staying at center. As long as you're breathing deeply and feeling safe in your movement. When you're ready, slowly coming back down to the ground. And this time we'll let the knees fall outwards for recline bound angle, feet together. Again, you can place one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. Or maybe both hands on your belly or both hands on your heart. Whatever feels called to you. <sighs> Again, channeling and being with any feeling that you feel. Feeling how your breath helps you feel more calm and slow down your heartbeat. You feel more comfortable and safe. Before we finish our practice, we'll go into an inversion, closing the legs back together. We'll find shoulder stand, more gentle inversion. This whole time we've been focusing on radiating the heart forward and heart opening, but I'd like us to finish with a Jalandra Banda with a chin energy lock, which combines our chin to our chest, kind of closing the energy within there so that when we come out, it will burst open forward into our fish pose. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift your legs up, start to roll your hips up and bring your hands to your lower back. Feet up towards the sky, make sure you're not moving your neck. There's a lot of weight here on your shoulders and on your head. A couple deep breaths here, just letting the circulation flow from your feet to your upper body, helping that circulation flow. Reaching those legs up towards the sky, squeezing the legs together. If it feels comfortable, maybe walking the hands higher up onto your back towards your rib cage, finding more length in your shoulder stand.
and then we'll slowly bend the legs and roll back to the ground slowly slowly vertebra by vertebra straighten the legs on the ground and we'll find our fish pose. Now in fish pose, we lift up onto our elbows and then let the head fall back. And if you feel your head isn't close enough to the ground, you scoot your hips back, back towards your head until your head reaches the ground. You want to be really on the crown of your head, not the back of your head. If this feels comfortable, you can move your hands from the ground to your thighs, to the top of your thighs. If it's not, you can stay on the ground. Let's take a couple deep breaths here, opening that energy that we just closed on our shoulder stand. Reaching the heart outwards. Visualizing that beautiful green light radiating out of our hearts into the world. And then slowly release the head. Let's take a deep recline twist before we finish off the class just to release any last tension from our spine and from our backs and shoulders. Hug that right knee towards your chest and let it fall towards the left side, looking towards the right. You can open up that right hand and press onto, that onto the right knee with your left hand to go deeper into the twist or you can just open up your hands shoulder height in a more passive deep twist, whatever you feel called to. Whatever feels good to you. And then slowly coming back to center and changing legs. Bend the left knee, give it a nice little hug towards your chest. And then let the knee fall towards the right side, looking towards the left. Again, taking any variation that you want. One more deep breath here. And then let's slowly come back to center. Give your legs a nice big hug towards your body for wind release pose. Grabbing opposite elbows around your knees, bringing your head up towards your knees as well and giving a nice big hug. Feel your heart against your legs. Nice, gentle pressure to feel compact and safe within yourself and with yourself. And then release completely for Shavasana. Feel free to take any variation you like. I'm just going to lay flat on the ground. Roll the shoulders away from the ears and back onto the ground, making sure you totally release any tension out of your shoulders. Do a little body scan from your feet to your head, making sure you've released in every muscle possible. If you're not holding any tension anywhere. Also in the little muscles in your face, between your eyebrows and your cheeks and your teeth and your mouth. Everything feels like it's melting towards the sides of your body and into the ground beneath you. We'll be here for one minute, just breathing deeply and allowing our bodies to heal itself after our practice together. And just to breathe, just to be, without having to do or worry or think too much. Being totally present within our bodies and our breath.
Take a couple more deep breaths here on our back. Feel free to stay here if you need some extra time in Shavasana. And then slowly, using your hands and your feet, help yourself come up to a comfortable seat. Staying with the eyes closed, preserving that healing Shavasana energy within you. <sighs> Any comfortable seat. Find a tall spine. Feel your heart radiating forward and your shoulders rolled back. In this beautiful posture that feels so comfortable all of a sudden after this practice. <laughs> Place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Take a couple last deep breaths here, just feeling this energy we created within our practice, within your practice, in your body, within your heart, within your world. And then bring your hands to heart center. Thank you, namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today in this practice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment below. I really love and enjoy hearing about your feedback in my classes and how it went for you. Also leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to. Bye, have a beautiful day and week wherever you are in the world.